just flame, flame red. Can you believe this scenery? Boom, they just swirl at it, they come out out of the air, they hit it on the way down, they swack it with their tails, they charge it with their cheeks. There's one, there you go, good fish. Fish on, <laughs> look at that strike. Woo! <laughs> Canada, there is a land where the caribou outnumber the people 25 to 1. A land so vast and wild that whole areas of it remain unexplored. This land is called Labrador. Her waters carve through the impenetrable forests and create paths into the deep, rugged center of the province. I have come to glide over these waters, to venture into a Canadian Amazon in pursuit of brook trout that have reached gigantic proportions. Heading 30 minutes north of Goose Bay, deeper into the backwoods of this northern land. Here is where you find Cooper's Minipi Lake Lodge, the launching point for my journey. Each day, I will quest further. I'll explore new lakes and travel the veins of virgin rivers. Six pound, seven pound, even 10 pound brook trout swim the corridors of this enchanted forest. Labrador is over 100,000 square miles of wilderness. From the mystic Torngat Mountains to the North Atlantic coast are some of the purest watersheds in the world. Within these pristine lakes and rivers, giant brook trout thrive. And here, it's dry fly fishing at its finest. Like so many other kids who get hooked on fishing, I started off in small streams catching trout. When my uncle first brought me to a stretch of rapids and taught me how to read water, I was spellbound. Around each river bend, there were always new riffles to discover, new secret spots that held trout, big browns, leaping rainbows, and of course, the bejeweled brook trout. As I have aged, my passion for fishing has intensified, but the rivers and lakes of my youth have changed over the years. More people, more concrete, and less fish. I found myself pushing further and further north, Labrador is one of the last remaining bastions where one can pursue trophy brook trout. Salvelinus fontinalis. In Latin, it means char of the springs. And to me and so many other anglers, this specimen is a freshwater unicorn. a big brookie is magic. I have come all this way, enthralled with the prospect of even seeing such a legendary beast. Perhaps because somewhere, deep inside, the young boy in me refuses to grow old, and the man wishes to walk the rivers of his youth just one more time. Kelly Groves has been guiding out here for years. He tells me September is the best time to fish for brookies. The leaves and the fish both transform into such majestic colors. Come on, Papa wants a big brookie. So Kelly, what do you think they hit these big orange bombers for? Do you think it's because it imitates like a mouse or it's just a big, big bug? Well, it just looks like a big, big bug, I guess, and it makes a good commotion on the surface, easy to see, a uh, good, easy meal. Good, easy meal. Sounds good to me. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, what a strike. Nice fish. <laughs> oh, look at the colors on these. Things. It's like a box of Smarties with fins. There you go. Beautiful little fish. These colors on these brook trout are just phenomenal. Gorgeous. This time of year, you cannot get a prettier looking trout than this. Outstanding. 
Kelly, do the big ones get these colors too? Oh yeah, the males get even more brilliant than that, and their jaw comes out and their back comes up. They're beautiful fish this time of the year. On dry flies, can you imagine a better way to catch spectacular fish? Oh yeah, wait till we get to get one on a mouse. You see him come right out of the water on him. A mouse. Mouse patterns, I can't believe it. This fish is just gorgeous, just gorgeous. The brook trout love it out here. Not only because the water is so cold and pure, but because it's a great place to dine. The trout have a full menu of insect delicacies to choose from. Mmm, escargot? Nope, it's a little peel and eat caddis appetizer. And for the main course, stonefly au jus. Crunchy on the outside, but tender and lean on the inside. I'm getting hungry for some more brookies. Ray Best is another guide on the Minipi. He's somewhat of a wilderness veteran, having won countless battles with the elements. In Labrador, the wind easily transforms an inland lake into what may as well be a raging Atlantic Ocean. But almost as quickly as it comes up, the storm passes by. Just passing through the narrows here, casting an orange bomber, and bang, he hit it like a shark on the surface, like a bat out of hell. My first giant minipi brookie, and I got a bird's nest in my hand. Total disaster. Oh, my, uh, Ray, can you undo this quickly before I die? What a strike. I can see why they use those big mice like that, the displacement of the water. It's like the water level went down a foot when he hit. That's a pike, Mark. <laughs> it's a what? Pike. No, are you serious? Yeah. Oh, no wonder he struck so hard. Just so sure it was a huge brookie. I was sure it was a monstrosity of a brookie. Well, my first minute pee brookie ends up being a pike. But a nice fish. <sighs> what a tease. I feel the brookie fever heating up. I guess I'll have to keep going even further. Tomorrow, we take on the Canadian Amazon. Look at the colors on him. Oh, oh my god! The mere prospect of a giant brookie has filled me with adrenaline as I enter this wild tributary. These streams form the lifeblood of Labrador's water system. This corridor penetrates the forest and creates a window to a wilderness, dense and remote. We have quite the journey ahead of us, deep into the boreal jungle. And even if it means hauling a 500-pound boat through boulders, we're gonna push on. Pretty clear whose turf we're on. This is the Amazon of the North. No wonder giant brookies live here. Now all I have to do is find them. Slowing the boat to a crawl, I put a line in the water to troll a surface fly. Being out here in this desolate wilderness, I can't stop thinking about my childhood and early fishing adventures. At 10 years old, I could walk all day, plunking worms behind boulders and along undercut banks. Today, I'm most at peace when casting a fly in serene surroundings. Right in there, okay, strip it. There he is, oh, there he is. There he is. Just hit the bomber like no tomorrow. Oh, oh my God. Look at the red. Unreal. Wow. Usually olive green and silver, when it's spawning season, the male brookies really turn up the charm trying to attract those ladyfish. I cannot believe the colors on this thing. Just flame, flame red. Oh, yeah. Look at the kite on the, on the head of that fish there. That, that shows that he's a male. To help them fight off other competitors for female attention, the male brookie's lower jaw protrudes into a hook that's called a kipe. 
These vermicular patterns act as camouflage and look like light reflecting off pebbles and stones when viewed from above. A good way to throw off a predatory bird or bear. Okay, well I say we let him go? Yep, let him go. Hey, there he goes. The wild thing is that normally you catch brook trout, you know, in streams, 10 inches, 12 inches, but up here, I mean, they come and they attack viciously, like pike, they attack mouse flies and big bombers on the surface. I mean, it's wild, these fish. Oh, yeah, and most, like, like you say, when they hit those surface bugs, you know, the bombers and stuff, it's, they're just magnificent. Just display so much water, just dynamite. So what do you say we go try to get another one? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Traveling upstream in a small boat, I feel like I'm entering the heart of darkness. My quest for a giant brook trout feels surreal. Ooh, unreal. That was, the colors on that fish were mind altering. We have come as far as we can today. We must return to camp before darkness locks us out. But tomorrow, we'll start again, pushing further, going deeper, ever seeking out a Goliath. Holy, did you see that, Ray? Did you see that squirrel? Brook trout fever afflicts those from near and far. Once you're infected, there's really no cure. You can't describe it. Your heart pounds, your head gets excited, you start fumbling sometimes, especially when you see the first one. The biggest brook trout I got before I came here was eight inches, so when something is approaching eight pounds, how do you describe, how do you describe that? My biggest fish was three and a half pounds. It was the second brook trout I ever caught in my life, and it was right here in this lake. Never in my mind did I think I'd catch a six pound brook trout on a dry fly, which I did here last summer. I believe that a my 10-pound brook trout will come out of the Minipee River system. This is Kevin. He's been coming to the Minipee for over 20 years. He has a mission in life, to catch a 10-pound brook trout. He believes there is one in these waters, and he believes he'll be the one to catch it. If I catch that brookie, I'll probably end up letting him go back so I can try to catch him again to keep me coming back. Here comes my ride. Today I'm traveling by air. I'm heading to Anne Marie Lake, another rookie hideaway. Check out these landscapes. It's been just over 50 years since Labrador has been part of Canada. Before that, it remained isolated by extreme harsh weather. Ray knows this lake like the back of his hand. Sometimes she gets a little moody and throws some waves. At other times, she's calm and very hospitable. Looks like today is one of those days. Let's hope we stay on her good side. Up ahead here is Lover Boy, Lover Boy Rock. What do they call it that? Well, to make a long story short, there was two owners and uh, one had a bunch of sons and the other one had a bunch of daughters. And one of the sons fell in love with one of the daughters. And he didn't want to come in here to work at the camp. And uh, his father made him come in anyway, and they brought him up here. They put him out there on that rock, and he started catching fish. And he forgot all about his girlfriend back in Goose Bay. <laughs> so ever since then, they call it Lover Boy. Well, if I catch one out here, I'll certainly forget about a lot of things. Yeah, Lover Boy. Kind of reminds me of my first girlfriends as they look through my photo albums, trying to get to know me a little better. It always asked me why there were only photos of me and people holding fish. Come on, lover boy fish. Drop it in front of that rock. Strip it up now. Gotta be a lover boy fish out there. That was a splash. Yep. Come on. Fish on. Come on. Hit it. Oh. Nice, nice, you got him, you got him. Good, that's a big one. How's that for Loverboy magic? Look at the size of this brookie. This is what it's all about. Trophy giant male brook trout. Oh, 
What a beauty. This fish is just gorgeous. Okay, now I'm on a roll. There's gotta be more around Loverboy Rock. Holy! Did you see that, Ray? Did you see that swirl? Unbelievable, he ping-ponged it with his nose three or four times, then he finally came back at it from, from on top and just swacked it. What did he take? That was the bomber. Yeah, the orange bomber. Just ping-ponged it with his nose. Okay, get ready. What a fatty. <laughs> that fish is so fat, it's insane how fat it is. Only in the most pristine water can you find a specimen like this. This is a trophy Labrador brook trout. There's nothing like it. Just dry fly fishing at its finest. Tacked it like, a, like an Atlantic salmon. Unbelievable, this fish. You are beautiful. Mwah. Love them. Love those female brookers. And they taste so pristine, too. Oh. This day could not be any more remarkable. A giant male brookie and a gorgeous female on a bomber? Wow. It's like nature was offering me both yin and yang to make me complete. I often dreamed about what giant brookies would look like, and these fish did not let me down. But there's got to be a bigger kahuna out there. <laughs> this fish is very not small. Holy smokes. My last day, but the journey's not over. Kelly is not wasting any time. We've got this boat going as fast as it can fly. I feel like a kid, excited, energized, and the possibilities are endless. A bigger fish is out there, and we're up for the challenge. Saving the best for last? I hope so. The brookies out here have really found prime real estate. Many of the trout that used to live near cities have disappeared. Acid rain made their liquid layers toxic. Just when I think we've come as far as we can go, our journey continues on foot. just keep pushing deeper, getting swallowed by the Labradorian forest. Every step forward may feel like two coming back, but I don't care. Anything to get a crack at a giant brookie. Do you think one of the reasons that your brookies get so big is because of these sort of pike brook trout predation? Like, how does that work exactly? Well, they say uh, the pike, uh, the char in the lake, and the brookies all live together here. And uh, survival of the fittest, I guess. The pike uh, weed out the weak and the old, and the fish evolved uh, so, so they would withstand those conditions, I guess. Kelly keeps telling me that if I want to tempt a giant, I'd better use some heavy artillery. I'm breaking out the big guns. This isn't a fly, it's a rodent. <laughs> It may not be as fluid and poetic as most fly fishing, but to raise a goliath, you better offer him a real meal. I'm willing to try anything and everything to catch a beast. Getting closer to the edge. The edge of madness. Come on, Brookie. There he is. There's our buddy. That's a healthy specimen. Beautiful Brookie. Now where's your mama or your papa? 
These mice are incredible. I mean, you just cast them, let them skim around the surface, and boom, they just swirl at it. They come out of the air. They hit it on the way down. They swack it with their tails. They charge it with their cheeks. They are ballistic. They want to kill these poor, hapless mice. It's incredible, this fishing. Now we're losing light. We've come as far as we can. The structure out here is sublime. There are so many places for trophy fish to hide. Oh, there he is! What a strike! Unbelievable! Oh, the power of these big rookies. Just, oh, look at the colors on him. Oh my God. This fish is very not small. Holy smokes. Just a beautiful specimen of a beast. I think he's got a big kite on. I think it's a male. Oh, look at the colors on it. The fins are just fluorescent flame red. Unreal. I'm gonna land it over here in the calm. Woo! <laughs> look at the colors on this monstrous male. Just starting to get a kite forming, a beautiful specimen of a male brook trout. I mean, how many places can you get a huge specimen of a brookie like this? I have to tell you, the first time I saw those mouse uh, patterns that you were tying, I thought you had been in the bush too long. They're like mops. But look at the size of the fish when they hit. Wow. We use big mice for big fish. No, no job. Big mouse, huge fish. I'm hooked. Good job. Love those mouse patterns. Well, I survived my intense journey into the heart of Labrador, and I feel somehow changed. As if I have walked a river that has come full circle. Being in such a remote place, I've been reminded not only of how things might have been before man came to dominate vast expanses of nature, but of how the simple innocence and joy of being a child lives on. So I've made my home in the big city. Fishing ties me to something bigger. It always connects me with the earth and the natural creatures that roam the ground and swim the waters. Though I came here like a man, questing for his freshwater unicorn, when I pulled in those brookies, I was once again the boy of my past.